Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Parisis and welcome to another video. You may have seen my previous video on oral minoxidil where I did a deep dive into the research looking at the pros and cons, the good things and the bad things about the safety and effectiveness of oral minoxidil. Now oral minoxidil in history was used as an anti-high blood pressure medication. But a lot of people have started using it to uh, boost hair growth because of hair loss. Now, I did some thinking since that video and I thought about the few case reports that outlined some potential heart-related side effects with oral minoxidil. Now, case reports generally are very low in the level of evidence pyramid, meaning that they're not very strong evidence. And since they were very few, and since um, oral minoxidil has been shown to be safe in quite a few large clinical trials, um, I myself am personally willing to take the risk with oral minoxidil. I'm interested in its hair boosting effects. And just to clarify, this does not mean that I am recommending um, that you take oral minoxidil. Unfortunately, I'm only able to make this recommendation when the safety of oral minoxidil is really 100% confirmed. And really we need to wait for future clinical trials in order to confirm this. Please ask your doctor before starting any new medications. So whilst I've said I'm willing to take the risk with oral minoxidil, I really wanna do it in the safest way possible. And the main reason why there's been some scaremongering or some fear over oral minoxidil is because of its effects on blood pressure. As I said, oral minoxidil lowers blood pressure. And we don't wanna lower blood pressure too much, otherwise we start to run into problems. And so, for me, starting oral minoxidil, I really want to prioritize measuring my blood pressure regularly. So that's what I plan on doing. Now there's two other metrics that I also want to measure, which include heart rate and my weight as well. Now the reason why I want to measure my heart rate is because when you decrease your blood pressure, your body responds by increasing your heart rate. Your heart pumps faster in order to try to counteract that, redu that reduction in blood pressure. And really we don't want our heart rate to be running faster than it normally is. It puts more pressure on the heart and it means you can run into more problems in the future. And the reason I want to measure my weight is because when you lower blood pressure, fluid can leave the uh, blood vessels and pool into other parts of the body. So for example, fluid can seep into your ankles, it can seep into your lungs, it can seep into the area around your heart. Um, it can build up, in other words, and that will be shown if your weight increases when you start taking oral minoxidil. Again, not the best um, thing to have. So I've actually made a template for myself, which anyone can use in order to measure my blood pressure, um, heart rate and weight, first of all, before taking oral minoxidil, which I've already done, and um, also uh, measuring my blood pressure, heart rate and weight after taking oral minoxidil. And this is um, one week, two weeks, and at three weeks after taking oral minoxidil. So if I show you here, you can see my oral minoxidil monitoring form here. I'm gonna put my name, Dr. Paresis. And then step one tells me that before starting, I wanna measure my blood pressure and my heart rate on three separate occasions. So that means different times, let's say over three days, and you can put the date here and you can record it in this table. I also am going to measure my weight before starting. After starting, I'm going to measure my blood pressure, my heart rate, and my weight. And these can be at the same time. And this I'm going to do at the end of every week for three weeks. So you can see week one, I've got my blood pressure, my heart rate, and my weight. And then I'm going to do the same at the end of week two. And I'm going to do the same at the end of week three. And I'm also going to measure my blood pressure at any point if I feel dizzy because generally dizziness can indicate low blood pressure. So I wanna pick up on any episodes of low blood pressure that I get as well. And if you're wondering how I measure my blood pressure, it's super easy. All I did was I went on Amazon and I bought a blood pressure cuff for less than 20 pounds. And it's really quite self-explanatory how to use. You put it on your arm and you basically press this button and it just measures your blood pressure automatically. And then I can just record it on my document.
Today is the first day I'm taking 2.5 milligrams of um, oral minoxidil. I also want to track my hair progress and whether I get any benefits in terms of um, density. So the main thing I'm looking for with oral minoxidil is to improve the density of my hair. For me, I have tried topical minoxidil with very little effect. There is some research to suggest that oral minoxidil can um, have better um, hair growth benefits with patients who don't respond well to topical minoxidil. And that's because it's broken down by the liver uh, by an enzyme that um, it's called sulfur oil transferase. For some people who don't have enough sulfur oil transferase in the scalp tissue, Topical minoxidil is less effective for hair growth for these patients. So I'm hoping that I'll get a better response with oral minoxidil over topical minoxidil because of this. And just to show you my um, baseline, what I'm working with currently, I've had an FUT or strip procedure in the past where I had pretty much the frontal third of my scalp um, consolidated or strengthened with hair transplant follicles. And you can see here that I've got good strong hair because of this at the front where the transplants are located. Behind is definitely weaker and this makes sense because my hairline was receding and it has continued to recede slightly. So the hair behind is slightly thinner. Now the finasteride has helped to slow this down but it hasn't stopped it for good. And so my hair has thinned generally as well. So really what I'm looking for with oral minoxidil is an increase in overall density. You know, minoxidil is mostly known to benefit diffuse thinners. That's people who haven't had sort of localized specific areas of thinning, but almost a more of a widespread loss. And I have experienced some of this as well as the um, hairline recession. Something that's really, really common in a lot of patients. As with all treatments, I usually recommend waiting about nine months to 12 months before kind of analyzing whether it's working or not. And that's what I plan on doing. So today's day one, and I hope that I get an increase in density of my hair in about nine months to 12 months. If you're interested in my oral minoxidil journey, uh, do subscribe. I'm gonna post uh, update videos uh, from now onwards, but probably at about four months then eight months and probably 12 months. So I'm gonna post regular update videos. Uh, I'll keep you up to date about whether it's working for me, whether I have any side effects or any kind of interesting details, things I notice being on oral minoxidil. My name's Dr. Parisis. I post uh, vi regular videos on hair loss treatments and hair transplant surgery uh, tips and uh, things to watch out for. Thanks very much for watching.